Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to 4 Strategy Gaming. Gonna be taking a look at a strategy video today, but what is this? This looks like a team strategy. Well, that is because it is a team strategy video. Um, now, I just really want to touch. This isn't gonna be a typical strategy video with you know your typical build orders and all that stuff. I just want to discuss general ideas and concepts behind team play, um, how to properly play, and the best way to respond to situations. Especially in this game, we're gonna be looking at responding to super early aggression. Our opponent are going to be pushing out with marines and zealots really really heavy push really early on um, and we're going to look at scouting about that and responding to that properly and then preparing for that next step so i want to make a few notes about team games first and foremost um, in team games early aggression is pretty much king in team games you always 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 see early aggression that's just a constant for you um, it's something you're going to see on a regular basis from your opponent so you have to know how to scout it and you have to know how to realize it's coming and to prepare for it now generally speaking in general terms what i like to do in team games is i like to go for that one 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 build um, it's very dynamic it provides me with the most opportunity um, uh, for which uh, things i can do um, and it, i much prefer to going for something like a three racks build early on because three racks builds are basically if you're not aggressive early on you're in a lot of trouble now what you're going to see here is me moving out with an scv and i'm going to be scouting to check for that probe because there was a probe in our base this is a very large map you want to check for proxy pylons you want to check for cannon rushes as dumb as they are they happen in team games now what you can see over here is tempest is doing some scouting with his probe and we're what we're going to see right now, and I'm going to pause the game, this is what you need to look for, and this is what you need to know to expect. When you move out with your initial scout, so as if you're if you're a Protoss player and you're scouting, you move out after that 9 pylon, or if you're a, a, um, a Zerg player, your scout maybe move out at a 10 or 11 supply. If you're a Terran player, you move out after that supply depot finishes at 10 supply. That timing, when you get into the base, you're going to see if an early push is coming. If you move into a Protoss player's base and you see a cannon, I, I'm sorry, if you see a forge, you can expect a cannon rush. So you want to check all those corners of your map. You want to check the low spots, check any dark areas to make sure that there's no cannon rush coming. If you see two gateways and you see two barracks, what does this tell you? This tells you absolute 100%, I'm 100% certain that we are getting pushed with Marines and Zealots. There is no doubt in my mind at this point in seeing this. So Tempest sees this, he's gonna call it out, and then the next step is you need to prepare for it. Now, unfortunately, Tempest being a little bit of a dummy here, getting <laughs> his probe jumped in a corner, but the damage is done and the benefit is had for us by the fact that we saw what we needed to see. We saw two racks and we saw two gateways. We know what's happening. Tempest calls it out. Now, I wanna let you know, Tempest is a friend of mine. I play team games with him, and then we kind of go into big team games randomly. So it's me and him, and then our allies we don't really know, but we still want to let them know what's going on. Marine Zealot, get prepared for it. We know what's coming. Now here is that deviation. Normally, let's pause real quick again. Not pay attention to this bunker right now, because that is not normal. You don't normally open up with a bunker. Typically, everything that I'm doing thus far, very standard. Opened up with a depot, followed up with a Rax while the Rax is building, got the refinery. As soon as the Rax is done, started building a marine, getting that orbital command. That is super standard. Now let's go back here just for a moment and take a look at what Tempest is doing. Okay. Going back just for a moment before his probe died, and this is the important, this is the important part, right? So his probe is up, right? And he sees this push. What does he have so far? Very, very standard. Opened up with a pylon, gateway, a simulator. What would the next step be? Next step would be to get another pylon and then get your cybernetics core. But, however, <laughs> he saw this push coming. He knows super early aggression is coming. He needs to prepare for it. So what he's going to do in response is get his second gateway. He's going to prepare, allowing himself to get out some additional zealots early on. Another option, of course, would have been to get a forge to get some cannons. But since I have the capability of building bunkers, and I'm going to be doing that here, he doesn't need to really consider getting cannons quite yet. The bunkers are going to be enough really early on to defend. So I'm going to be changing as well. Again, getting that bunker, that is not standard. That is not orthodox. Typically, I would not wall off. Uh, we knew what our opponent's races were before the game. It was two Terran and two Protoss, so we're well aware of that. Typically, I would not be walling off, however, um, against these guys. But I am going to, and I'm going to get two bunkers early on because I know that early push is coming. And again, Tempest is doing the same thing, getting that second gateway, going to allow him to pump out um, some additional zealots early on in the game, and then he's going to be going for a Cyber Next Core. So this is kind of the, the first step in a two-part thing when it comes to dealing with early aggression in team games. The first step is knowing it's coming through scouting. 
And the other option, of course, if we had the Zerg player and we moved in with that early scout and you saw pool building already, like around 10 or 11 supply, if that pool was almost done or 50% of the way done, you would know Zerglings are coming early on. I need to prepare for it. I need to get my wall. I need to make sure I've got units to defend and I need to make sure my ally is doing the same thing. Now, we told our allies about this push and since they're both Protoss, I'm completely shocked that they didn't get a forge earlier. There's no forge coming out right now for them to get cannons because they're not going to be able to defend themselves against Marine Zealot push with a kind of a wall off. That's kind of pointless. The only reason that we're okay with not getting cannons so far is because of the bunkers. But that was their decision. We can't tell them what to do. Sometimes we try to, but it doesn't always work. So the first step in seeing early aggression, responding to it. You get those bunkers if you're Terran. You get maybe cannons if you're Protoss. Um, spine crawlers if you're Zerg. Maybe even using roaches. If there was a Zerg player right now on our team, I would suggest spine crawlers and roaches pre to prepare for that early defense. Uh, roaches against a Marine Zealot push gonna do great. You know what I mean? They're gonna be fantastic. Spine crawlers, of course, adding that defense. So the first step here, and we're gonna see this push right now. And I want to make a few notes about the push. Um, we're gonna see in just a moment just how heavy they are pushing. Again, they're just moving out with massive amounts of marines and zealots so the first step is defending the next step is getting that advantage over your opponent so we know a few things and here we're going to go with another pause all right so we know a few things we know for one that our opponents are pushing early with massive amounts of units look at all of these zealots look at all of those marines and i think if i take a look at everyone vision here um, we can see reds moving out with some zealots here as well uh, so reds kind of doing the same sort of thing obviously and here we go those are our opponents there pushing out with those marines and zealots heavy barracks uh, just coming down with that factory so the advantage, now, without actually physically seeing this, like we can hear through everyone vision, you know when you see something like this that they are behind on tech. It's obvious. If you can get just enough to defend yourself and then continue to tech up, that's going to put you at a tech advantage. And that tech advantage is what can win you the game. So we just know this inherently, right? I know for a fact that my factory is ahead of both Terran players' factory. It's, it's obvious because they've dumped so many resources into these early Marines. They must have a few more barracks and they must have spent a lot of resources. They're, I mean, these units are right here. Each of them costs 50 minerals. It's not much of a question, really. It's pretty obvious. So... In knowing that, we get just enough to defend. We use the advantage of the bunkers to defend ourselves. And actually, Tempest is going to be coming down and placing a few cannons eventually as well. Um, but just enough to defend and then work towards that advantage. So I, again, I know that my factory is ahead. And let's take a look and make it kind of even more blatantly obvious. Look at the blue player. No factory even building yet. Just having these barracks still. Um, the Terran player. This Terran player over here, same thing. The factory is not even 50% of the way done. My factory is done and my starport is in. And then taking a look at the Protoss opponents as opposed to Tempest. You can see Tempest here, Cybernex Core, and Twilight Council is in. Look at that. He's starting to work towards that tech. Let's look at, at the other Protoss players. This guy's got only gate gateways this protoss player over here same thing just on gateways now um, so clearly the tech advantage is in our hand we've got the defense we've got the tech advantage now from this point it's about just making sure that you can survive that push and then go from there now our opponents right now you may say something like why aren't you guys moving to help your opponents this would be fruitless this would be this would be completely pointless there'd be no absolutely no point in moving out right now with such a heavy early investment in these units, our units would just get slaughtered in transit, and then we would provide no benefit and we would have no defense for ourselves. It is their fault for not defending themselves, knowing an early push was coming. They did not take the proper step, being a double Protoss, sharing a base. They should have gotten cannons, right? As soon as they saw that two racks, two gate, they sh one of the two players should have placed a fort down. They should have got cannons. With cannons and maybe with some sentries for force fields to help um, cut back the damage that the cannons take for a short amount of time by splitting the units. Had they done that, they could have defended themselves, but neither player did. So they both they both ended up losing. Tempest not too thrilled with them. But we know that helping this is pointless. So the point now is try to survive ourselves and then use our tech advantage, use our known tech advantage to hit them hard. I am going to go for Cloak Manches. This is going to be my response. I know for a fact that they dump so many resources in here that they don't have a lot of tech. They probably aren't going to be able to deal with Cloak Banshees, at least not very effectively. Also, I know for a fact that their units are freaking halfway across the map, and with such a large map, it's going to be very easy to do a lot of damage. So here we go, seeing that first Banshee moving out right now. Now, I initially started to move out in that direction, but what Tempest is going for, and we'll take a look right over here and see that um, what Tempest is going for is a DT rush so Tempest is gonna be placing his pylon over here immediately I'm gonna be rerouting my Banshee a little bit of a blunder there luckily his Marines were on move command um, I could have taken a little bit of damage wouldn't have lost that Banshee but would have taken a little bit of damage but anyways 
pylon being placed over here, what's going to happen is I'm going to drop a scan. He's going to warp DT into the back of the base. He just pinged right there. There we go. So there's the scan. There's the DT. And here is my Banshee moving out right now. And this is kind of the pivotal point right now. I'm going to pause here again. Warping in DT right now, huge advantage. Let's take a look at everyone vision. You can see right now, not prepared to deal with DT. He would have to wait another 25 or so seconds for that uh, energy to come through for that scan to deal with those DT. Um, the Protoss player up here, not ready at all for DT. He's got another gateway getting that warp gate research. Over here, are these guys prepared for cloak banshees? No, most certainly not. You know, he's got some energy for a scan, but as long as you're smart with your banshee you can just move it right out of the vision and you are all set so let's jump back into our vision here and continue to play and so here we're going to see that advantage right now it's 2v4 but what we're going to manage to do is we are going to be able to systematically take them apart because they pushed early because we defended ourselves properly um, and because we have that huge tech advantage and that's exactly what you're going to see right now tempest forcing a lift up of that orbital command that's obviously a huge problem because now he can't even scan with it once he does get the energy and then Tempest is also going to be moving over some of his units over here to uh, take out the economy and then work on the Nexus here. So the first goal here is going to be to take out our opponent's economy. That's what we're t attempting to do. And then once the economy is hindered, then we're going to be working on important tech building. So we're going to be get taking care of this Nexus. Next target would be something like the Cybernex Core. Um, continue to work on the economy. If any threats move in, take those out. Like, for example, for me, threats to this Banshee would be Marines. I know that scans are possible, so I'd want to pick off Marines as quickly as possible. You can see here they're trying to push with the units they do have not going to do much of anything however um, simply because of the fact that again we do have this wall we prepared properly in this defense and then all the while continuing to work on your next step you know not only we don't want to just think about the here and now you always want to think about the next step so we know right now we're doing a great job we're hurting their economy but that doesn't mean we've won the game we want to prepare for the next step you can see here i'm coming down with that command center i'm going to continue to macro up continue to produce units the entire time while i'm working on this banshee harassment tempest has got this expansion down already and he's continuing to pre prepare for that next step as well he's can have those warp ins coming you know what i mean getting upgrades at this point would be a good idea too um but this is kind of the important thing that you want to make sure that you do this is the important thing when you're playing the game that's not anyone's vision that we need. This is the important thing you want to do that, you know, realize that if you can defend that early aggression, you get that take advantage, you had a huge advantage. Just continue to macro up and you're going to win the game. And you can see here, I'm just going to be picking off all those threats. I killed all those Marines, even though that scan was down, didn't do much of a difference. Uh, red player is pretty much gone out of the game right now. Tempest is continuing to harass the blue player with these DT. He is obviously not too thrilled at this point. And all the while, like I said, while this attack is going on, while we're doing this, all the while going to be working back at home to keep that production constant. You need to make sure that you're always hitting those hotkeys and that you're always producing units. So constantly, while this attack is going on, while I'm attacking with these Banshees, I'm literally nonstop hitting four, five, six, seven, four, five, six, seven. And when you do that, you can make sure that you're always producing. Uh, Tempest is going to obviously want to be using those warp gate cooldowns whenever they're ready, whenever they're available. And then with that advantage, you're going to have a nice massive army. You will have dissembled what they have for economy between the banshees and the dts or whatever you choose to go for that tech advantage and you can see over here find this expansion so going to be checking that out taking that out but then because you've been massing up an army and uh stupid little zealots blocking the path there <laughs> because you've been massing up an army you're going to be able to push out with a large force at that point so hindering their economy because they lack that tech and then pushing out with a large force that's going to be what it takes to um, survive an early push and that's what it's going to be uh, that's what it's going to take to basically win the game and again you can see what took place here is the simple fact that we defended ourselves we saw that early push coming through scouting we defended ourselves and then we pushed out with that tech advantage and we ended up winning the game in a 2v4 scenario um, it's not always going to be the case, but it's something you can definitely do if you defend yourself properly, and that's about it. So they do call it a good game. I mean, that's pretty much the end of the game. Um, the whole point of this, really, is to show you guys the different dynamics in team games um, and and what you can do to opponents who push out early. I know early pushes, like I said at the beginning of the match, um, early pushes are king. Early pushes are something you're going to see in most of your games when you play team games. So you need to know to scout it and you need to know to prepare for it. So again, as Terran, that's going to be bunkers. Um, wow. Maybe deviating from your normal by getting that second barracks as opposed to going for that factory first. Um, maybe getting that second gateway for more zealots early on or even getting that forge forced. So maybe opening up gateway forge if you see that early push coming. Helping the front wall with some cannons and then continuing to tech up. And then you can see going for something that's unorthodox. I, d I wouldn't have necessarily even had to go for Cloak Banshee. Say I went for uh, a Hellion drop. That would have been equally as effective. I could have done a lot of economic 
like damage lifted up and then went to the next person and just continued to do that. Um, and even if uh, T Tempest didn't end up going DT, he could have done something like gotten a warp prism and done a zealot bomb. The whole point is taking them by surprise with the tech advantage, taking out their economy, and then continue to work on that advantage by constant production. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, kind of long-winded here. Uh, there's definitely a lot to talk about in team games, especially since there's multiple people and multiple uh, you know races involved. Um, but I'm going to be covering another 4v4 as well right after this, so hopefully you guys enjoy it. Uh, if you do, make sure you subscribe to the channel. And as always, keep watching and keep owning.